guys, today we're going to be sowing our sweet peas and poppies, but this video is just going to be about sweet peas. So um, I'm going to show you what I've got here, all my kit set up to start with. So I have got um, this funny contraption, which is, uh, they're called root trainers. Now um, I'll put a link to these ones that I found on Amazon um, underneath this video. They, the one, these ones, I like them, they're really sturdy actually. You can get some that are quite flimsy, but these were sturdy and they weren't too expensive. Now, if you don't have any of these, uh, you can use nine centimeter pots, no problem at all. I just really like using these. So show how they work, right, they come like this and you clip them together. Right, and you can see they're long and thin and this is great for sweet peas. They're part of the legume family. So they have a long tap root and as they grow long down this way, uh, we want lots of space for them to grow long and branch and um, really grow strong roots inside of here. And you don't get as much room to do that in a nine centimeter pot, but you can use what you've got, right? Some people use toilet rolls because they're long and thin like this. These have um, little channels down the side. So when the roots hit the edge, they just manage to go straight to the bottom um, rather than taking a more meandering route, which they might do if you use toilet rolls instead. So you want root growth straight to the bottom, big long root. When the roots hit the bottom, uh, what happens is they start to, um, they kind of break off and they start branching inside of these things. So that gives us really strong, sturdy roots for when we plant them out in uh, March time. Okay, so we're preparing the seeds now. I think on the sowing instructions, I said, wait till January if you can, but actually ignore that. Um, you can start straight away as soon as you have your seeds, but you can be sowing these in um, October, November, December, January, even the end of February. Um, all the way through okay so don't worry if you haven't got time to do it now but the sooner you start if you can get started this side of Christmas um, you just got more chance to grow stronger roots so I've got my root trainers they all get held together in this little thing like this uh, the other thing I like about these by the way is that when you're ready to plant them on um, you can open them up like that and literally lift the plant plug out to, to pop them on and we'll come to that in a moment so what we're going to do here is so I've got this I've got my seeds I have got my labels for those of you who always forget your labels before I even get started and um, I'm also going to share the link to these on in Amazon under here as well um, it's taken me ages to find and I found them more by luck than anything but I finally found some that are matte on one side so it means that you can write on them with pencil um, I'm a great fan of using pencil rather than my sharpie pen because you can rub it off and just keep reusing. Right? We want to be using as little plastic as we can. So I found some, finally, that you can write on very easily with pencil. So I'll, I'll put a link to that underneath. But I've got my four sweet peas labels here. Okay, and what I'm, my plan is, is to sew one row of each. Okay, so the other thing that I have here is my um, peat-free compost. So this is Silver Grow peat-free compost. And all I'm gonna do with this is I haven't sieved this because the sweet peas are quite large seeds. I haven't sieved it, um, but I've kind of gone through it with my fingers like this to take out any big lumps. And all I'm gonna do is fill the seed tray until you wanna be planting your sweet pea seeds a couple of centimeters deep. So I'm just gonna keep going like this. until I have filled all of these cells and keep pushing it down to make sure there's no gaps and keep tapping and I'm going to keep doing that until um, there's just a couple of centimeters of space left at the top of each one okay I stopped the video while I did that because it takes longer than you might think it takes more compost than you might think so go through each of the cells and just press it down to make sure you'll be surprised like how much air is in the bottom of these. And you just wanna make sure your compost is quite firm. So you can see I've got a couple of centimeters gap at the top of each one of those. And then what I'm gonna do is get my seeds. And I'm actually just going to sow two in uh, each of these cells. 
So what I'm gonna do now, I've got my seeds here, I'm going to put two in each of these cells. So I'm going to put them in the opposite corner from each other. And what we're going, why we do this is uh, just because you can really. So it'll be a waste of compost just to sow one when you could sow two. So we don't know if all of these will germinate, but if they do, what we then do is when we come to move them on, we will move them for the rest of their lives together in little pairs with each other. Um, and I'll show you in a moment how we do that. I'm just gonna do one row of these for you so that you can see. So some people say to soak your sweet peas the night before. You can do that if you want to. I have never ever done that and I've never had a problem with sweet peas um, or soak them in paraffin, all sorts of things. But um, to my mind, um, so that's my Janet sweet peas. But to my mind, that's um, I've never needed to do that and I've never had a problem with germination. Um, so you can if you want to, have at it. If you feel like you wanna add an extra step, do. So all I'm gonna do now is take my compost and just lightly cover over that row. If I wasn't doing this on video with you, I'd do the whole tray and then cover it over. It just makes it easier, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm just gonna show you here. So my compost is actually really damp from um, just where how it's been stored. But um, so it's quite moist already, but if it wasn't, I would now be watering this, um, put my thing in so I know, I know which one this is. And I would now be giving this a really good water with my watering can, um, with the fine rose on, not this big chunky rose, but with the fine rose on. And literally just turn the rose upside down and give it a really, really good water, okay? And then what you're gonna do with these is um, you can take them and put them on your kitchen windowsill. Um, you can put them straight into the greenhouse like this, but I like to put them on my kitchen windowsill so I can actually see them as they start to grow. And um, what you wanna do with sweet peas, and this is the biggest mistake I see people make, is when you your sweet peas, as soon as the first couple start to germinate, as soon as you start seeing um, any kind of life poking up beyond the soil, take this whole tray and get it outside of your kitchen okay so and that means put it in your greenhouse your cold frame if you don't have like a mini greenhouse there's another blog post about greenhouses but if you don't have a mini greenhouse um, you can build some contraption out of bricks and a bit of horticultural fleece or plastic plastic that you can buy at any kind of hardware shop but find some way of um, getting these seeds outside into the cold because they need warmth to germinate but as soon as they germinate they, they really really require light and there is not enough light in your conservatory or in your kitchen for these things to grow. I know it looks really light but there really isn't. They need to be um, outside in a greenhouse. So the most common mistake people make is they leave them inside and then what happens is you get really tall, long, leggy sweet peas that start falling over and they've got like two little leaves right at the top here and all this massive long stem. And um, they, they're they putting all their energy into growing the, um, the stem here and reaching and looking for the light rather than focusing on building the roots, which is what we want at this time of year. And we want it's little sturdy plants and big chunky roots inside here. Um, so I'm going to show you what happens as they start to germinate. Um, when they get to a couple of inches high, three inches high, about this high, um, we're then going to pinch them. And I have another video on pinching, which I will show you. And at that point we'll check. And if we see that they are starting to fill up the root trainers, then we'll pot them on. So I want to show you an example of some that I sowed a couple of weeks ago. Um, and the stage that they are now at, just so you can see the kind of the journey to expect as we go through. So these will germinate. Sometimes they can take up to two weeks, but they, they, they seven to 14 days before they start germinating. So by that time you need to have somewhere ready to stick them outside so that they don't get all long and leggy. Um, and I'm gonna show you the next stage and then I'll talk to you about what happens when we actually go to plant them out. 
Okay, so these sweet peas were sown 26 days ago. Okay, and as soon as they germinated, I brought them out into the greenhouse. So they are looking quite tall and thin, but they're not falling over. They're really strong, healthy plants, okay? So again, I did the same as what I've showed you. So I sowed four rows of each, and I put two in each, um, two in each container. And there's all but about three that have germinated. So really good, strong seeds we've got here to grow with. And so what we're going to do now is when they're at this height, um, they, you can actually start to pinch them out at this height. So let me show you with this one here, hopefully you can see. So this one here is this tall. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the first set of leaves here. And I'm going to pull the top off, right? So I've taken that out. Now you can do that, I can do that because they've got these leaves, they've got these leaves, so these are their first true leaves. So I've pinched, them out, pinched it out down to there. Okay, and why we do that is that encourages the plant to start branching. And what you want is um, sweet peas that, that branch out and give you more and more and more flowers when they do that. So I can go through this hole. See this one I wouldn't do yet. This one here, which is this high. This one, who's his friend, not, not quite yet because doesn't, he doesn't have another set of seeds, another set of leaves. This one I could do here, just pinch the top off. This one I can pinch the top off. This one I can pinch the top off. So, so now I've pinched this row here, but I also want to show you what's going on underneath it all. So the great thing about these little things is you can pull it back. So if I lift it up and show you here, you can see the roots are starting to come out at the bottom, right? And so if I open it up, another great thing about these is you can open them up without disturbing. You can't do this with a nine centimeter pot. And you can see the roots all growing and reaching for the bottom here. Now I wanna wait actually until the roots are a bit more substantial than that before I pot them on. And then I'll show you what I pot them on into. Um, oh, look, you can see there, look at that. Isn't that amazing? So not too much more growth, but I'll probably give these another, I'll probably give them another week and then I'll check back in on them and I'll post an update video as and when I pop these ones on, these exact ones when I pop them on. But when we do pop them on, we just pop this back in. When we do pop them on, okay, so this one has been pinched. I can't remember when I sewed this one, which is dreadful, I know. But this one has been pinched. Um, it's already starting to branch out and I've put it into this pot which is a deep, I think this is like 20 centimetre pot. These ones I bought I think from Sarah Raven but you'll be able to get them on Amazon as well. And they continue the theme of having this long deep pot here so that the, um, and if, if I'd grown this one in pairs which I didn't, there would be two, well, unless there are two sweet peas actually in there. So um, I would grow this in pairs, I'd move them on in pairs into here. And then they would sit in this until um, sort of middle to late March when the ground starts to warm up. That's the point at which we're going to put them outside. So what we're looking for now is not too much growth here. I mean, they will grow here, but all the root, all the action is going on underneath the ground now over the winter. And then come March, when the earth starts to warm up, we'll pot them out. And if you've potted them in pairs, you want to pot them about... 15 to 20 centimeters for each pair and if you've grown three and you're you're moving them on in threes because you've started them off in a nine centimeter pot you probably want to leave about 30 centimeters uh, between each plant so they've got enough air and space to grow so um that's how you also want to think about how many you might want to start now one way of starting your seeds is to look at how much room you've got to grow in and then make sure that you so that many seeds, probably about a third extra because of the mice and slugs and everything else that will get them. Um, if, but I, with my sweet peas, I'm a bit naughty in that I sow as many as I want and then I try and figure out the space for them later. <laughs> and I'll just build more space. I'll find more space. I'll get creative about more space because I, I want a whole heap of sweet peas this year. Um, the, the last thing I do want to say about sweet peas um, is mice love sweet peas 
So I will always start off and germinate mine inside in the kitchen. So you never want to start them off outside totally unprotected or in the ground because the mice will just get them straight away. So I always start them off in the kitchen and when I move them out, I don't put them in, last year I tried putting them in my cold frame, I tried putting them in my garage and the mice just got them. So you live, you learn, you sow some more, you start again. And so that's when I bought my little lean-to greenhouse last year it was because of sweet peas. And so I bought my little greenhouse and I'll put a link to the blog post where you can see it. And I put them right in the top shelf there inside the greenhouse. Or then I ended up buying a little walk-in greenhouse because I started growing so many in other little plastic walk-in greenhouse. And I always make sure they're right, right, right on the top shelf so they're away from all of the, um, the mice who just want to have a massive, great big feast um, as much as they can. So you want to keep these moist but not really damp. Um, and then we are, I'll post more videos as these all grow on so that we can all be growing together. And I'll post some pictures at the end of this video to remind you what it is that you're growing. But um, last year was my first year of growing sweet peas and I, I was just blown away by their beauty, by how quickly and easily they grew, uh, how you cut them and they just grow more. And, um, and the scent as well is just beautiful. So I ended up giving away last year, like whole just bunches of sweet peas. I, did, I could have grown nothing else and just to have my sweet peas in bunches to give away um, was, was so appreciated, especially by the older people that I gave them to who had really fond memories of sweet peas in their gardens from when they were younger. So it was a lovely thing to do and, and your house will just be full of the scent of them all summer long. These ones should flower quite early as well because we are sowing them in the winter. So you've got a head start uh, by sowing them now. And I'm gonna do a completely different video for your poppy growing, but I wanted to um, share this one with you as a separate video because I know there are other months where you may be thinking about growing sweet peas and you just wanna watch a video on this. Hope that's been helpful. Let me know in the Facebook group. And as ever, please show me your little pictures of where you've got your sweet peas growing, where they're starting to germinate. Um, even the fact, look, I've planted them, like I love seeing all your photos because um, that inch by inch that we are covering the UK in flowers, um, I, love, I love seeing the journey of that. So I hope that's been helpful. Uh, enjoy sowing your sweet peas and uh, just remember to treat them mean, keep them keen really with sweet peas. So they do really well outside when the, te where the temperatures are lower. Last point, if it gets really, really, really icy, icy cold, um, you know, really like minus three um, at night, you want to go out and maybe throw some fleece over them just to keep the frost off them. Um, they might get bitten by frost, but don't worry if that happens. It's just like they've been pinched again. <laughs> so keep, keep going, keep hoping. And what will happen hopefully is that even if they get bitten by frost, they will still, their roots will be so strong that they will still be able to flower and grow when the weather starts to warm up again. Okay, they're tougher than you might think. Okay, on that note, I will see you later.